This is Thorin, and here is the latest edition of my World Rankings for CSGO for Desertor. This edition takes place after the CSGO Asia Championship, won by Mouse Sports, and before ECS Season 8 Finals begins. The rankings cover a time span of the 27th of August to the 27th of November, and so that means essentially the latter two phases of the major right up until the CSGO Asia Championship. In my B class, the ranked but not top teams, we start at number 10 with a brand new addition to the rankings, NIP, Ninjas and Pajamas, the original dynasty of CSGO, but obviously now featuring only one name from that dynasty, which is of course Forest, and then a bunch of newer talent generally. Now, NIP actually coming in at this place, I'm not actually sure the eye test even warrants it. I think actually they've got a lot of flaws. They've largely just been fragging. They look very lost without an in-game leader, but you cannot argue with the results. They made it to the final of Blast Pro Series Copenhagen. Sure, Blast formats are a bunch of best of ones, but they were beating some very big name teams to go ahead and do so. Astralis, Team Liquid, the two best teams only a few months ago. They managed um, to come top eight at Star Series Season 8, which yes, top eight's nothing crazy, but this was a tournament with double elimination format. As a result, they got to actually beat Evil Geniuses, number three, I think, ranked team in the last rankings, in a best of three, that's big time. In EPL, they beat Vitality, another top ranked team from the summer, still with a high enough ranking, thanks to the slow decay of their placings. So regardless of what you think of the eye test, results-wise, in terms of the resume, in terms of the placings, you can't argue with NIP being a team on the brink of making the top 10. And in this particular case, I favoured them over the likes of Furia, who obviously had no impact on the major. And actually, I didn't think had enough overall resume wins. And other teams like Na'Vi, who on paper, I actually think the eye test says, uh, not on paper, the eye test I think for Na'Vi suggests they are actually a much better team potentially than this NIP squad with a lot more firepower, but they don't have the placings. Generally, they haven't been able to get many ranked wins. A lot of their placings are fairly naked, actually. In at number nine, another new addition. It is FaZe Clan, obviously a classic team that's been in the rankings many times over the last few years, but had sunk out in the post Carrigan era where they had Neo and they had a Dren, but this is the new look phase clan with the big, big signing of Cold Zera, bringing in no name of Brocky from FPL. And actually, despite starting so poorly with the last place finish at ESL New York, they managed to win Blast Pro Series Copenhagen. Again, not that crazy in terms of the only one, one best of three, but they beat a number of good teams to do so. They beat the likes of uh, Navi, Astralis, then they went to IEM Beijing. Now, they only finished top four there in an 18 tournament. Not that crazy a placing, but then you look who they beat to finish there. They twice beat Evil Geniuses in best of three series. And Evil Geniuses is one of the best ranked teams in the world. And even the eye test in their good games show they're an incredibly good team. So a very legit performance by FaZe in that regard. Sure, it's only really a two tournament run. We have to see what more they can do. Largely, they are just fragging. They don't look like they have a very in-depth tactical or strategical approach to the game. But they've got, now that a bunch of the players are back online and the new recruits have done something, actually, again, a pretty high skill aggregate across the team. So I actually expect they can have tournaments where they'll punch high and they'll be able to necessarily get into the middle of the rankings I don't think they'll go much higher I also think that they will certainly have tournaments they bomb out of as even EG's shown us right now and they will have a tough time because it's a very competitive field right now in at number eight this will shock a lot of people and this is an example of where the eye test has to give way and bend the knee to rankings rankings are predicated primarily upon placings in tournaments and then the context added in as tie-breaking components of who you beat in those tournaments who else was at those tournaments and quite frankly Team Liquid has some placings that might put them slightly higher. They even have, obviously, a top four at ESL New York, but they have a very bare resume of actual ranked wins. Their only ranked wins are a single map against the Stralis at ESL New York, a series over Renegades at EPL, a series over North at the Major, and a series over Mouse at the Major. So none of the elite teams generally in terms of series wins because 
all of the summer run has fallen away for Team Liquid. And so even though if I had to pick a team to finish top four, top five, they'd be one of them at the next big tournament. I still think this team has the potential to even go back to number one, depending on what happens mentality wise. And in terms of reformulating their game, maybe swapping up a couple of roles, maybe put Naf as more of a fragger. I actually think that the rankings, it's absolutely deserved that on mine, they've dropped much lower than other people because they just don't have the on paper accomplishments to justify being higher up, even though having them in a B-class ranking, that certainly doesn't vibe with me. I feel like they're at minimum A-class and on the border to S-class if they show a little bit more. But if you place this far below teams that I also consider to be B-class, then you have to be ranked B-class. That's just one of those areas where rankings are different from personal feelings and hence why you have to have our current system. As a result, Team Liquid drop six whole positions. Imagine saying that during their summer run, or even after the major, that they could drop this far and have this few placings in terms of going much further in tournaments. At number seven, we have a team jumping up two spots, and it is Mouse Spots, a team that didn't make a roster move in a long time, a team that seemingly was played out and plateaued. They very rarely have had meaningful top fours. They would play teams close, but not do much. And then they go to the CSGO Asia Championship. They beat Evil Geniuses. They beat Avanga. They beat Ents. And what do you know? As a result, they win the tournament. Certainly, it was in inspired form. I don't know how much of that they can replicate. Again, a lot of individual performances that overcame team issues I think they've had before. Team play largely has been a problem in this team, I believe. I also think communication isn't that great because they have such disparate nationalities and cultures coming together. But this showed the potential that they've hinted at all year and finally manifested it. So if they can do this once or twice more in the coming months, they can be a team who can maintain this kind of a ranking or maybe even a little bit higher. With that said, We've seen enough of them now that it seems unlikely they're going to suddenly kick into some high gear and be placing top four every tournament. At number six, dropping only one spot is a Vanguard. Now, a Vanguard is a team, if you know me, I don't think the eye test bears up whatsoever. But if you finish second place at a major and then you win, admittedly not that great a blast field, but a blast... Yeah, guess what? You're going to have a decent enough placing for the months following that major. So even though they haven't been able to add any kind of ranked win since those two tournaments I spoke about, they finished 9th to 12th at Star Series Season 8 and 5th to 6th at CSGO Asia Championships, they're still actually a team which, if you ignore the placings, the placings get them to this position. Actually, in the server, they're somewhat impressive in the context of who their players are, where they come from, where they were a few months ago. It's just they're not actually as good in the server as this ranking says. And I do not think they can maintain this ranking. I think they will inevitably drop down. And as soon as the major drops off, I personally don't think they will be a top 10 ranked team again, barring maybe the odd outburst at one big tournament that might get them a decent placing. Moving into the A-class tier. This is top teams, but not the championship favourites. Not the teams before the tournament where if someone asks for your top two or three, you say these names. These are the teams on the outskirts of that. In certain cases, formerly championship favourites and S-class teams. At number five, dropping down one spot is the France's Vitality, who obviously replaced legendary in-game leader formerly and support player NBK with shocks. One of the greatest star players France has ever produced, but not right now. And quite frankly, even though the placings continue to be up and down, but decent enough for Vitality, they have fairly bare runs. Like, they don't tend to beat the top teams. In fact, they feed a lot of series to the other top 10 teams. They beat the rubbish teams or the teams that are just on the brink, 11, 12, 13. And actually, even though they finished top four IM Beijing, they cracked top eight at Star Series Season 8. It's nothing comparable to when they made the shocks move. They finished runner-up at Malmo. And for all the world, they look like they could, perhaps even should have won that tournament. And as a result, would go on to be a consistent top four team, maybe become even better than the previous Vitality. That that is not on the table right now. The jury very much out. And in the next couple of lands, if they don't have some meaningful big series wins over teams, the last one that they actually had was at Malmo. I don't think actually this will be a team that will contend. I think potentially they have a chance to drop into the B class even. Jumping up six positions to an unprecedented fourth place is the former Renegades, now known as 100 Thieves, the Australians and Jacob. And of course, this is a squad where if you followed my rankings for a long time, the only relevance they ever had was they occasionally cracked number 10. It's actually where they were in the previous edition. And that was largely in the last edition due to majors, Katowice, due to the more recent Starladder major. 
And they were never a team that was going to win big series. That was the problem that they had. That has absolutely changed. Not only did they finish fourth at Star Series Season 8, a double elimination tournament where you played a lot of different opponents and teams, but then they went IEM Beijing, a tournament that had Astralis and Evil Geniuses and FaZe and Ents, and they finished in second place, losing only to Astralis. Very, very impressive stuff. They're a team that I think, yes, max out what they have in the server. I think they still need a superstar if they want to be a true champion, but what an incredible story. They're a team I love to watch. I think the eye test is really pleasing, even though I don't think it suggests they're much better. I think they actually, to some degree, could be a team with consistency. I expect them to go up and down two or three kind of positions in tournaments, but I think they could rock into that sort of third to sixth place in most big tournaments they play. They've got the quality in the map pool. They've got the roles. I even think the team play and the communication seem pretty good, and I love their coaching. I think Kassad is a contender for best CSGO coach in the world, along with Zonic, quite frankly. Then you've got to look at their resume. These guys are really adding series in. So when they went to Star Series, they beat Fnatic, obviously champions of Dream at Malmo. They beat Vitality, second place Dream at Malmo. Uh, they beat at IEM Beijing, Ents in a series, okay? They beat Ents in another series. Yeah, Ents isn't very good at the moment. They're also feeding, but they are a ranked team. And they beat Vitality again, just for good measure. So a lot of best of three series ranked wins at this point in time. And over teams reasonably high up in the rankings, actually. It shows you how far the Renegades, now 100 Thieves, have come. And they steal a spot at number four. Incredible. Then we go to number three, and this is Fnatic, a team gaining three point positions, and I have to hold my hands up. I am very surprised by this, but I'm quite exhilarated, actually, because their run at Dream Up Masters Malmo, in the Simpsons, we had Nip Magic. This was Fnatic Magic. It looked incredible, looked like a one-off, looked like you couldn't expect that to happen again. Now, it didn't happen again. They finished second at Star Series Season 8, but again, a really stacked tournament with double elimination components, and coming second place there was not expected in terms of the field, so they have outdone my expectations. I actually think overall, you have to give them a lot of credit. Now, it is only still two tournaments that they've done this at, but what a current run of two tournaments. I mean, this is big time stuff. And they've added some more ranked wins. They beat Mouse Sports at Star Series. They beat Vitality at Star Series. In EPL, they beat Vitality. And they added a map win against EG, the eventual champions of Star Series at the same, very same Star Series. So again, defying expectations, somehow crawling their way all the way up into number three. I never would have thought this would happen with this core of Fnatic ever again. It was inconceivable. Obviously, some of these players, Grims, JW, Flusher, were in what at one point in time was the greatest team in history. That was back in 2015, four years plus ago. This is amazing that they're back here. I don't expect it to continue. And you'll note, I didn't put them into the S class. Now, people might say I'm hating on them. I just think that if you look at what they've done, I don't think so far they've established that it's consistent and that actually they're going to be able to beat the team's Astralises, EGs, who knows where you're going to put the next squad. Is it Team Liquid? Is it someone else? Whoever these squads are, I don't think they can necessarily a team that you can expect to get the big wins over those ones. I'm not quite sure they quite deserve to be in the class of Evil Geniuses and Astralis, obviously potential champions of any tournament they enter. The S-Class Elite Teams consists of two squads. In second, we have Evil Geniuses gaining one position from third last time because they went away, they won Star Series Season 8, then they had a bit of failure. They went to IEM Beijing and then CSGO Asia Championships, both in China, one in Beijing, one in Shanghai. They only finished fifth to sixth there and didn't win these tournaments. Now, Beijing, it's not the end of the world, you didn't win it, Astralis was there, but to not even make it to the f top four... That was really, really shocking and really suggested a lot of brittle fragility, I think, within the CG squad, despite the fact when they're on form, they can be incredible and thrash Astralis even. Similarly, the CSGO Asia Championship, they lost to Mouse Sports, a team that's played them and beaten them in the past, a team that matches up well with them. And crucially for me, a team that has a very good map pool and has an in-game leader willing to flex around that map pool. And I think what you saw there was that when someone flexes the map pool against EG, who don't tend to flex it much themselves, and they want you to play into, oh, I do you like Dust 2? Pick Dust 2. We'll pick Inferno. We'll pick Dust 2. You pick Inferno. We get our maps. When you start pushing them around a little bit and banning what they don't want you to ban, they look out of their comfort zone. Then when they travel, they don't look as good. And finally, when Breezy doesn't have a good game, he looks like he drags the team down as opposed to elevating them to potential championship status. So I test says when they're good, they're incredible. When they're not that good, they can be a very average team, sometimes looking like a bottom of the top 10 squad. But since they do have those incredible runs, they still look like an S-class team and a team that will win many more championships to come. I imagine, with this particular core. Now, they also added in, obviously, in winning those tournaments, one of them was a double limb tournament, a number of decent ranked wins. So 
they were able to add a win over Renegades, now 100 Thieves at Star Series, a win over Fnatic at Star Series, and then another win over Fnatic at Star Series, obviously the team that won Dream at Masters Malmo. Big time stuff. In at number one, no changes here, it's Astralis. Not too much of a surprise, really. Even though they went to Blast Pro Series Copenhagen and somewhat <laughs> it's best of ones, anyone could <laughs> And those finals at Blast do not yield even the two best teams in the tournament, usually, I think. Although, to be fair, it's just best of ones, so I guess in that format they do. And then they went to IM Beijing and just proved that, yeah, you know what, in a real format, they span cast because that's a best of three only tournament and they didn't lose a single best of three and then they got to the final and even won a best of five, three zero. Incredible accomplishment. There were top, top squads at that tournament, including their kryptonite evil geniuses who didn't get to play them. And so you look at what they've done since then. They added the best of three over 100 thieves at IM Beijing. They added the best of five over 100 thieves at IM Beijing. And then they were able to beat Team Liquid, their rivals, in a best of one at Blast Copenhagen, mainly for bragging rights, Slargy. So Astralis remain the kings of Counter-Strike. EG certainly can win a tournament and potentially overtake them. But right now, looking a lot more consistent than EG and many of the other teams in the top 10. And perhaps this is their time to rule for a more extended time than I thought. I thought maybe them, EG and TL, would constantly trade places.